Yeah, so here we are in the coziest interview. Yeah, so you ready? Yes. Okay. All right, so Andrew, today we are going to talk about four big issues that people experience with their audio on set. Okay. We've got static noise, hum, Mm -hmm. clipping, and phasing. Oh. You ready to do that? I'm ready. Let's start with static. So first thing is analog static. And this is going to sound like a white noise kind of static. Either your wireless microphone has interference on it, and it's having a hard time trying to decode your signal from the interference. And it's going to sound kind of like an old school television. Right. Now, on the opposite end of that spectrum is digital static. And that's going to be very 8-bit sounding. It's going to sound like a Nintendo game. That typically means your cell phone is really close to a microphone somewhere that is unshielded. Lavaliers are unshielded Mm -hmm. or they're just unbalanced cables, which means they're definitely not doing the best job of rejecting uh, interference. Okay, what about like a popping static? That's actually a short between your lines where your lines are actually breaking apart. And a lot of these cables have braided cables. So it's not just a clean break like a coax where it just cuts out as one gate. It's kind of braided, so as they break apart, they kind of rattle against each other. The best thing you gotta do there is just cut it. I like to go a couple of inches beyond the short, just in case there's not a secondary short, or the short's not bigger than what I think it is. Mm -hmm. I'll cut it, I'll put the XLR connector there. It typically happens, oh, about six inches after the connector, where the most stress is put on the cable. Mm Okay, that sounds like an easy enough fix for the popping static, but what if we're on set and we have one of the other ones, the analog or digital static? Okay, so analog static is actually a pretty easy one, especially if it's wireless, change your frequency. If you're getting the analog static, it means something else is trying to transmit on that same frequency and you just gotta get away from it. Digital static can be a little bit harder because you have to track down which cable is the offender that's picking up the RFI. And then you have to figure out what device is picking up the RFI. Typically within feet, you'll play with that. As you put it closer, it'll definitely get louder. As you pull it away, it'll get quieter. And sometimes the solution is just to separate the two. Other times the solution is to remove whatever is generating the digital static altogether. Just remove it from the environment. Cool. That's easy enough. Yeah. Okay, Andrew, number two, hum. So a hum is definitely going to be a more constant noise than the static, not so much an intermittent thing. What do you got? Let's start with the most basic, which is your ground loop hum. And what causes ground loop hum is actually being on two different phases of electricity. So what most people don't realize is you have three phases of electricity. In a house block, let's take a residential block full of houses. One house will be on one phase, the neighbor will be on the next, and the third house will be on the third. And it repeats down the whole street that way. So if you take a power from your house and you run it to your backyard to set up some speakers, and then you run over to your neighbor's house and set up some speakers in his backyard. And you plug those two systems in the same PA system because you want this to be a jam and party. You're going to get guaranteed ground home because the two systems are not going to like being on two different phases. Now, again, if you're in one house, you're probably not going to experience this. This is not a big deal for the most part. This is where you started experiencing it on bigger venues. There's a little boxes called humbuckers. Um, and ground loop boxes that really kind of get rid of all this kind of stuff. An inline box, it's passive, you don't have to think about it. Most of the time though, when you're talking about ground loop hum, you're actually gonna experience on the output of your mixer, not the input. It's all the things post mixer that could potentially be on a different phase. Mm. So something else that also can create hum is electrical interference. Something like this XLR cable run too close to an extension cord next to something like 120 volts, 240 volts, or worse, three phase, you know, on a set with the generator and all that kind of stuff, you have no chance. And if that thing's coiled, it's creating just electromagnetism like crazy. And then you run your little XLR cable right next to it. I mean, you're gonna pick that up in your audio. So you need to separate that. I like to typically do it by three feet. Um, It's your best bet of not picking up electrical hum from power cables. Good to know. Okay, so as a quick recap from that, To remove hum, make sure you're not pulling from two different sources that are out of phase. And we're talking about electrical phase here and not audio phase, waveform phase. Mm -hmm. And also be very wary of cable crossing. You want to maintain at least a distance of three feet between your audio cords and power cords. 
The first time we posted this video a couple of weeks ago, uh, we immediately got a bunch of comments saying our analysis of what causes ground loop was a little askew. We have now come back and we're going to correct that by actually reposting this now. And that is saying ground loop at its most simplest core is when you have two different parts of an audio circuit or any circuit hit ground at two separate points and they actually have enough potential to connect to each other. Uh, so that is kind of what is creating your ground loop hum. So that is a better definition of ground loop and now back to the original film. Number three, clipping. We all know what it sounds like, what it looks like, the head getting chopped right off your waveform mm -hmm. and a real crunchy, bad sound. Oh yeah. How do you fix it? How do you prevent it? Well, let's first identify what's causing the clipping. So what I like to do is always go to the source first and foremost. Is that talent yelling? You can always use Ernberg square law. Let's double the distance. You drop the volume in one fourth. So instead of a microphone, you know, being eaten like it is right now, right in front of me, if I back off half the distance, it now drops one fourth in volume or perceived volume. So that alone could really help your clipping situation. Like if you know a scene's coming up and an actor's about to yell, you're booming, you're booming, you're booming, you know the scene's about to happen where mm -hmm. the yell happens and you pull back just ever so slightly and that can mix off and do a little bit of that clipping right there and prevent it without you having to also change all your gain structure right. for one line of dialogue. That's the easiest. That's also the most free out of all the solutions out there, inverse square law, you learn it, you know it, it's free to do. Let's talk about line going in the mic. If it doesn't have a adjustable line output setting or the mic input doesn't switch over to line as an option in whatever your gain stage is, you may have to buy a specialty cable that does what's called a negative 40 dB pad. This actually adapts line level to mic level. Sometimes you'll see microphones with a pad on it and sometimes it's mostly uh, negative 10 dB. But if you need to go full on line level down the mic, you need something more than a negative 10 dB pad, you need negative 40. And that's something where you may have to buy something special. Another thing you can do uh, if you're worried about clipping your audio is cascade your channels. Okay. So a pro camera with a XLR kind of module built into the camera, sometimes will let you route input one down to channel two. What that allows you to do is the recorded channel, channel two on your camera, can be the same input as input one going to channel one, but you can actually adjust the volume so it actually receives a different attenuation. Okay. So in case you're trying to record nat sounds and something gets loud really quickly, you just use channel two instead of channel one during the loud part. This Zoom F8 actually has it so I can cascade channel one down the channel four, channel two down the channel five, and so on. They actually get a duplicate of these four channels with their own independent gain structure. That's a really cool feature to have, especially if you're doing wide dynamic range kind yeah. of stuff. Okay, so to recap all of that, the easiest way to do this is to literally move your microphone farther away from the source. It's sort of a natural form of attenuation. You're yeah. going to decrease the volume. Use physics. If you can't do that, there's a series of other gain staging techniques, things within gain staging that will help get you there, whether it's pads that are going to actually knock down the gain mm -hmm. or setting up cascading channels that will allow you to record at different levels. And we also do have an in-depth gain staging video that you guys can check out for more information on that. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, there's always just a analog limiter you can just turn on. Cool. And that's going to save you a lot of time in post because, as you mentioned, there are plugins that do declipping, but it's a little dicey. And yeah. why not just fix it in the first place? So number four, last and certainly not least, is phasing, which we did tackle at length in one of our mailbags thanks to a great question from Curtis Judd. So this is not an easy question, and I gave it to Steve. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great one. Uh, but a few of you guys actually wanted to see it demonstrated yeah so here we are in the coziest interview yeah so you ready yes okay hey steve how's it going out there pretty good andrew how are you so this is actually to demonstrate we've actually got these microphones set at a plus 40 db gain so it's actually a very hot gain That's super especially hot. about the uh proximity effect we have going out there so what i'm going to ask is you to answer what you think phasing sounds like oh I think we did cover this and we answered uh, 70s music. That was our, that's our most concise answer. Phasing sounds like 70s music. Things coming in and out of phase, sort of a watery effect, like a chorus, a chorus pedal, but not as intentional and also kind of like going back and forth through frequencies, higher and low frequencies. As the two mics were close, they probably started to sound very similar to each other. The isolated recordings were fine, but that stereo mix, all of a sudden you'd have the volume here 
And as one fell down, they actually both kind of fell down because the one was canceling the other one. And it sounded probably very weird, kind of like as you were saying, 70s music. So the fix on set is be very conscious of distance between mics, right? If this is a very hot mic, it's picking up all around it. If it doesn't need to be as hot as, as what you have it set, drop it down a little bit. Because if you can reduce the sensitivity here and boost it up somewhere else with a very quiet preamplifier, mm. then everything works out just fine. So to recap, if you start to hear phasing, check your distances. Mm -hmm. As always, three to one rule. We go over it a lot, it comes up a lot, abide by it. And if you can't, if that's out of your control, reduce the sensitivity at the capsule because you can boost it in the mixer and that should prevent you from picking up somebody else's bleed in your love. Correct. There's one last elephant in the room and that's RF interference. Yes. So reason why we tell you guys out there, hit subscribe is because we actually did a video about this a couple of weeks ago. So if you had hit that subscribe button, you would already know that one. And it sounds like Steve, you're not subscribed. <clears throat> That's a wrap up to this episode, I guess, because we got to talk uh, off camera. Uh, if you like this, though, uh, you could always hit the like and the follow and subscribe and all those kinds of good buttons on all of the social media platforms that we're on. If you still have bad audio, though, drop the comment below and tell us what we didn't answer so we can help you guys out. Best comment is actually going to win a D3. So, yeah, really cool microphone. That's a great prize. Yeah, it's a great prize. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones. He is DD Steve. That is a horn outside, which means we got to go. Thank you for watching. Thank you.